All right, people, welcome back. More card view. So we looked at that Blazing Mirror Force and that, uh, of course, that popular right now card, Storming Mirror Force. And of course, it seems like Konami's gonna make a Mirror Force for every single attribute in the game. So we finally have the Earth Mirror Force. Uh, just waiting on the water, and I think that's it. I think that's that, people. So hopefully the water one will be good as well. So this is Beer... Burying? Burying? I hate that word. I have a hard time saying that word. Burying Mirror Force. I don't know why you didn't name it like Sandstorm Mirror Force. Darude Sandstorm Mirror Force. There. I got it. I got the joke out of the way before you guys even start. <laughs> so, Burying Mirror Force is a normal trap card that reads, when your opponent's monster declares an attack, change all attack position monster your opponent, opponent controls to face down defense position, Monsters change to face down defense position by this card effect and not change the battle positions. Period. So, do I think this card's good? Do I think this card's bad? I think it's kind of iffy. Uh, one of the things that is really good about Mirror Force cards is that it gets rid of the threat. You know, the threat is gone. You know, whether it be regular Mirror Force, they're, you know, destroyed and sent to the graveyard or banished if something makes them go banished. Or, you know, Storm Mirror Force where, you know, they go back to the hand and you don't have to deal with them right now or uh, you know if it's an extra deck monster it's gone like it's, if it was compulsed and moved off the field and that's great you know especially with how popular it is right now against like magic vectors who can't be targeted or destroyed it's like yeah it's not a mirror force where yeah I'm gonna have to deal with you later but at least you're gone for now so you get rid of the presence with this card they're still there you know the monsters aren't gone <laughs> they're still there it's just you know, now they're in face down defense position, but the good thing is that they simply just can't be flipped up, you know, uh, similar to how, how uh, that what that blazing mirror forces was like a ring of destruction and then of course storming mirror forces like a compulsive card kind of like a book of moon except they're down for good. So I guess it'd be more of like that. What's that one sword card that ghost tricks played? I don't even remember sword of concealing light, I think. Like I said, it's been like a cool minute since I've seen Ghost Tricks, but this seems like a card that Ghost Tricks would love. Just, you go face down, and you stay face down. So, this card's like Book of Moon, you know? So, uh, similar to when your opponent declares an attack, and you have the Book of Moon, your opponent declares an attack, and you Book of Moon, if your opponent declares the attack, they cannot change their battle position in main phase 2. They're, you know, set until uh, next available time to flip up their monster. But this says... It goes beyond that. It doesn't just simply say, like, hey, you know, uh, when your monster declares an attack, you know, you change the ball to face down position. They want to attack on the fact that you cannot change uh, the, uh, the position because it really only be the monster that declares an attack that can't be flipped. So let's say that I had three blue eyes on the field and I attack you with one of the blue eyes and you play this. And let's say, hypothetically speaking, this card didn't say uh, monsters change the face down position by this effect cannot change the battle position. You know, my monsters would go face down. Main phase two. Well, these two blue eyes didn't attack, so I can flip them right back up, you know. But Konami made sure of that. So uh, what I find interesting is, depending on how many monsters are on the field, you can easily go ahead and just lock your opponent out, especially if they have like no form of removing the monsters, whether it be tributing or you know fusing. You know, they're pretty much stuck. So let's say, for example, you have five monsters on the field and you attack, and I go, you know. Burying Mirror Force, you're all set, and unless I attack into one of your monsters to flip you up, or you tribute to summon a different monster that's, of course, uh, level 5 or higher, or you fuse with them as a material, they're stuck. They're stuck there, you can't play any more monsters, and you really can't do anything. So you kind of kind of soft lock your opponent, depending on how many monsters they have. You know, whether it be uh, cutting down to no zones, or four zones if they can't match you with four monsters in face-up attack position. Uh, it can be a nice little lock. Like I said, Ghost Tricks will love this card, and whoever's playing Ghost Tricks, I mean, you know, it's a trap version of your uh, Sword of Kazoo Line. You already play a whole bunch of those, so why not get a little bit more dirty with it and <laughs> set them down? Uh, set them back. I'll come at you, because of course everybody knows when you do against Ghost Tricks, you generally want to go aggressive if you can, you know, get rid of all of them uh, lanterns and them uh, uh, specters as quick as possible and, you know, try to push. But, you know, with this card, I mean, you try to push, you know, you summon your five monsters, try to push, bam. There's that bear, bearing rare force, you can't really do anything. Hopefully you contribute summon, because if not, all your monsters are set, you can't summon any more monsters, can't set any more monsters, I'm just going to stop summoning my ghost tricks and start poking you to death. So, that is definitely a thing that I can definitely see uh, ghost trick players doing if anybody plays, still plays ghost tricks. 
But, um, you know, it kind of makes sense. It kind of makes sense that uh, this is the way that this card is going. So, uh, yeah, we are almost done when it comes down to Mirror Forces. I did the card review on Storm Mirror Force and Blazing Mirror Force. I had to do the card review on this. And whenever the water one comes, I'll, of course, do the card review on that. Uh, I, right now, I have no idea what it's going to do, nor what it's going to be called. But so far, it, uh, these Mirror Forces have been taking on the effects of very powerful uh, cards, really. You know, whether it be, you know, Mirror Force or Dark Mirror Force or Blazing or Storming. They, you know, they all have... Uh, in their own way, some very powerful effects. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the water one does. Hmm. At the top of my mind, just go. At the top of my mind, what card would it copy? Hmm. Hmm. That's a tough one. That's a tough one because I couldn't even really think of what what this one would do. So, what would a water mirror force do? No, no, wouldn't do that. I was thinking maybe like spin it back to the deck, but that's a little bit too powerful. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I tell my mind I really can't think. I don't know. In the comment section below, tell me what you guys think the Water Mirror Force would do. And let's see how right you are when it actually comes out. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. So tell me, would you play this card over other Mirror Forces, whether it be Storming, Blazing, or whatever? And tell me which one out of uh, the Mirror Forces so far is your favorite. So uh, thank you guys for another awesome card review. Thanks for watching for all... Oh my god, I said thanks for watching twice. Thank you guys for all the support. I really do appreciate it. My uh, channel is going fine, and uh, everything's great. <laughs> I will see you guys next week with some more cards to review. Alright, people. Thanks for watching.